All right, guys, what's going on? The final entries for the rod giveaway tip series is in. I have them all written down right here on the Word document. And just for, if y'all are tired of Hunter propping me up in front of the Christmas tree, it is Christmas now. So that's going to be come to an end very, very soon. If you love the scenery of the Christmas tree behind me, it's got to go. It's just time to go. It's after Christmas and got to take it down. So going to jump right into this. These are about 20 of the best fishing tips we've gotten. A lot of them, you know, so a lot of people sent in the same kind of one. So I'm just going to say the first one that I received on that. But I did. I'll start with the first one that I believe wholeheartedly 100%. And I had two people send this one in. So Daniel Denning and M. Lizot both said never give up. And they both cited instances where in tournaments they have, you know, made it happen in the last little bit of the day, whether it be because, you know, the fish moved or they changed the areas or something like that. So just as a good life tip in general is never give up, never get complacent, and never, you know, accept that, you know, you can't complete something. So get back up to the top here. We got a few different ones. So Lucas Pina Fishing said that the one tip that he thinks about is whenever you're flipping and pitching, if you go to a lighter weight, you get more bites and that is definitely true it slows your bait down a ton y'all know i flip a standard half ounce weight whenever i'm flipping mostly wood all the time but that's just a standard for me if you go down to a lighter weight you will get more bites i just like how i can fish a half and i can go so fast so definitely if you have less cover in the lake there's a draw down or something like that definitely can go down to a lighter lighter weight and get a few more bites there's no doubt at all brendan smith had a good one that i implement all the time he said tip that I find myself using often is Google Earth and Navionics web app to find a place to fish. You can find a place to fish off the bank. You can find hidden ponds in your local town or whatever. I use that a ton. I spend hours and hours and hours on Google Earth, the Navionics map, the Lake Master map, trying to find a place to fish before I go to an elite event. So definitely feel that one deep down. I use that a ton. There's no doubt about it. Now, this next one right here is an interesting one that I've never heard before. Chris Fallon said his tip is to get a fish oil peel from the store, pop it with a hook, and pour it in a bag of soft plastics. Now, I have never heard that at all, but it seems like maybe it could work. I really don't know. But he said in the colder months, he really finds that the fish will hold onto it a little bit better. So that'd be an interesting, interesting one to try, seeing as how I've been fishing this long and I've never heard that. So pretty cool one there. Pretty cool for sure. So Ben Bowen said, change the size of your hooks in order to suspend, sink, or float your jerk baits. That's extremely true, Extre especially on the front hook of a jerk bait. You can upsize just a little bit because it already has that down first action, that head first action. So you put one on the, on the back, it's going to kind of make it sit flat. So you could upsize your front hook first and then your middle one and then your back one in that order to keep that, you know, down head first action out of your jerk bait. Definitely can help because obviously there's different different thicknesses of treble hooks and they all weigh a little bit more if they're a little bit thicker so Justin Buckle said do what makes you happy live your life to the fullest but his tip is one that I've heard a ton and never tried so if you've tried that leave me a comment down below he said that he takes a net bait hollow body pack a crawl and he fills it with pieces of Alka-Seltzer now I've heard that a ton you know, when you're bed fishing, you can put Alka-Seltzer in a soft plastic and use it, but I've never tried it. So if y'all tried that and you actually believe it works, leave me a comment down below and let me know that you've tried it, you had success with it. We might have to do that this year on the St. John's for a daggum 12-pounder on bed. So, Braden Crumley said one that I disagree with wholeheartedly, but he said if you think you're fishing too slow, fish even slower. Usually when I think I'm fishing too slow, my boat's going about two miles an hour. So I go extremely too fast all the time, but it's definitely correct. You, you should probably slow down more often than not. It's just not my style. But if you think you're fishing too slow, definitely should slow down, especially when it's tough. Let's go. Let's see. Bob Austin said he was getting ready for a tournament and he pulled out a bunch of spinner baits and all the skirts were melted and gunked together. And he said, put baby powder on them. I've never done that for spinner baits, but I have done that for my spro frogs. I put baby powder in the box with the spro frogs and it does keep the legs a lot more uh, like crisp and they don't get so melted and turn into the, you know, the rubber doesn't break down. So he said, do that with spinner bait skirts as well. Never tried that, but seems like if it works with spinner baits, it would work with jig skirts and everything else. So maybe I should put baby powder on everything I got. Just have a dang baby powder cloud when I take off in the morning. All right. Sean Wilson said, give any inexperienced person a chance to enjoy fishing, whether it's a kid or an adult. That, that's an awesome one. You know, it's a 
It's the biggest sport in the world is fishing, but most people don't see it as a sport because they're just out there having a good time. And that's what it's really all about. So the more people we can get into this, the more people are going to be, you know, at one with nature and enjoying life and, you know, get into the industry. So that's good. Mason Barney came in with a with a heat one, man, a fire one. He said the best tip he's got is to buy an ace jig in January and you'll catch five times more bass. Cannot disagree with that even one bit, especially since it's going to have my name on that jig. So here's another one that is talking about slowing down. Fern de Lis. I guess there's another L in there, but I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. He said, his tip is to take your time. Don't rush to get to your spot. That's how things get forgotten. Don't rush when tying knots. That's how you broke off. And also slow down when you're fishing. So that's definitely a good thing, especially for younger guys. You need to practice your knot tying as much as you possibly can and never cut corners. You know, like I've did it before where I, you know, my hands are cold and it's way easier to tie a polymer knot on fluorocarbon. So I'll tie a polymer knot instead of the double pitson and then I'll break off the next bite I get. Just don't do that kind of stuff. Take your time, make it happen, do things the right way, cover your bases, and good things usually seem to work out. Austin Thor, strong last name, very, very strong last name, first off. He said his early spring tip is he tunes his Spro Rock Crawler run towards the bank. He so he can parallel the bank and the bait climbs up the chunk rock towards the bank, just not right to the boat. He thinks those fish that are suspended on the 45 degree chunk banks react a little bit better to the bait running up the bank instead of running straight back to the boat. So pretty interesting tip, never tried that, but I definitely could see how it works. So here's one that I want to participate in. Jay Jackson said he thinks casting accuracy is an overlooked part of fishing and to practice his girlfriend and him use cornhole bowl boards placed randomly around the yard. You get two points if it goes in the hole. So I got winner. I'm playing next. Whoever wins, I'm playing next. I'll bring my seven foot three point blank and an ace jig and we'll go see who can ring the cornhole a little bit more. So I got winner on that one. So this is one that I've never tried before ever. Kyle King said in the Midwest and the Ozarks, he used a bright crawl colored jerk bait, especially in the pre-spawn. Makes sense because super bright crankbaits work, super bright jigs and spinner baits and chatterbaits work. Seems like a really bright crawl colored jerk bait would work as well. I've just never tried it. I actually don't even own a jerk bait that's not shad or you know bluegill color. So never tried that before at all. Let's get down to the next one. David Eisenbarger said that spike it aerosol worm dye is a quick way to recolor off color braid. Never tried that. I always just color, you know, the last few feet of it with either a Sharpie or a spike it black marker. Never tried the spike it aerosol worm dye, but if it works, it works. Hey, I mean, you can't argue with it. It probably smells like something fish want to eat also, so... You know, can't be too bad there if you want to try that. And if anybody has done that, let me know if that does, if the braid does soak that up and actually retain the color a little bit longer. So, David Hidalgo said his first tip is to keep it simple when jig fishing. And I could not agree with that more. I pretty much keep green pumpkin jigs and black and blue jigs in my boat at all times. And that's about what I throw no matter what. But I have recently started trying to use a couple extra color jigs, like a, I've got a dirty crawl color, an Alabama crawl color, an ace jig coming out, I've been using those a ton, and getting a lot of bites on it, but are they getting more bites than green pumpkin? I don't know, but it is definitely good to keep it simple when you're jig fishing, green pumpkin, black and blue, and he said you wanna change your retrieve, and you wanna change your trailer to get all the different nuances out of a jig, more than just the color, so use the color you got confidence with, and then change the trailer, and then change your retrieve to make the jig act differently and get you different bites instead of automatically thinking that you have to change colors. Okay, Johnny Weaver said he's a firm believer to do your best because second best doesn't cut it. And that's 100% true if you're trying to be better at anything. You have to give 100% to improve because if you're giving your 75%, you are not improving because you're not seeing your actual shortcomings. If you're giving 100% and you're still not getting it done, at least you know what you need to improve on. If you're given 75%, you've always got the excuse that I really wasn't trying as hard. So give your 100% best you can, and that's the best way to improve. So Corey Ameling said, when you're casting and retrieving, keep in mind you're trying to impress the fish, not your ego. That's a good one that I see people do a ton. Everybody wants to over glorify skipping and making these super accurate casts whenever the number one thing you need to be worried about is getting your bait in front of the bass and having the right bait and not losing any of them after they bite the cat the skipping and all that stuff is great it'll get you some more bites that you wouldn't normally get but 
You gotta realize what you're trying to do, and you're trying to put that bait in front of a fish. You're not just trying to skip so the guy in the back of the boat thinks, oh my God, this dude's the best skipper I've ever seen. That's a really, really good one, for sure. Let's see what's going on. This is one that I don't have the name, but it says pick a lure for the right situation, and that is, I mean, conceptually, the biggest, best piece of information in bass fishing. I hear people all the time, I'm like, man, what's your plan for this Saturday in the tournament or, or whatever? I'm like, man, I'm going to go throw a spinnerbait all day. It's like, to what? I'm going to throw it to docks, I'm going to throw it to trees, I'm going to throw it to sea walls. That's not what you're supposed to do. You go out there and you have all the lures on the front deck you have confidence in, and when you get to a situation where a spinnerbait is the best, it's time to just pick up a spinnerbait. You might turn the corner and there might be something where you need to flip a jig and you pick up a jig. So you always just pick the lure that's right for the situation you're in. Don't go out there and just say, I'm going to throw this one bait all day. That's a great piece of advice. I use that all the time. I keep way too many rods on the deck and I use them all, all the time. Ron Armstrong said, to be positive in life and fishing, get a high percentage goal that will make you feel fulfilled. And that is, that is a really good you know, piece of advice, but the high percentage goal you get, it needs to be one that's attainable and then set another goal. So the way that, in my opinion, the way the human brain works is you need gratification. So you need to be accomplishing small goals all along the way. Just don't sit at home and say, hey, one day I want to be on the elites and then just say that that's when I'm going to be happy. No, you got to be happy whenever you start doing better in points in your club tournament. Then you start fishing BFLs and you do a little bit better in points. You got to be happy. It's got to be a goal of yours. And all the way along the way, you have to enjoy the process and enjoy working your way up from the very, very bottom and, you know, be completing goals the entire time. Don't just fixate on the end result because if you do that, you're never going to be successful in anything you're going to do. Mike Harris said he's never seen a spot of bass that wouldn't need a Yamamoto skirt to grow up. And I kind of agree with that because that sucker is an absolute fish catcher. I haven't thrown it in years, but I know whenever I did throw it, it absolutely smashed them and a lot of people still do throw that thing a ton. Matt Mosley said his tip is to keep a detailed logbook of trips and fish catches. Makes it easy to spot patterns to make choices on new lakes a lot easier and especially year after year after year you can go back see hey I won this tournament a couple years ago I did this or you don't even have to win you can say hey I lost two big ones in this tournament I ended up coming in 13th but if I would have landed them I would have won and I know exactly what that had because sometimes you don't remember those tournaments quite as good as you remember hey I won this one last year in March but you know, if you keep a detailed logbook of everything that's happening, well, whenever you go back out there again in the same conditions, you'll be a little bit more efficient finding where the fish are and you'll waste a little bit less time in the water. So that's a very, very good one that I need to do a little bit more. But I guess that's kind of what I do with YouTube now is keep a detailed logbook of exactly what I did all the time. So Justin Beeler said, do not get stuck trying to force something to work. Just because you caught them one day does not mean you'll catch them exactly the same the next. And everybody who bass fishes knows that's to be true. It's a very difficult thing to do whenever you had a great practice day or even sometimes in the morning of a tournament you'll go smashing them and you might catch three big ones but you've only got three and the whole and then the fish change and the whole rest of the day you you know you struggle to actually feel your limit so you always gotta be willing to adapt don't you know force anything to work even if it worked that day the fish are always changing it might have you might have caught the tail end of a pattern or you know from day to day it definitely changes a ton so that is the Best bass fishing tips that we had, you know, sent in some really, really good ones in there. Some ones I've never heard of before. Some that I've been waiting to try for years that I've been hearing about. So if y'all have tried these tips and you think they work for y'all, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to go on there and talk to y'all about some of these things, if they work or not. Appreciate y'all guys sending it in. And the rod winner, we're going to let Hunter announce it. We have picked the rod winner officially. So you're going to get you a brand new point blank rod with Fuji Guides. SK2 real seat. If you want that, that's what I use. You don't have to. And we're going to let Hunter announce who actually wins the rod. So I guess I'm clocking out. I'm done. Hunter's coming. That's it. She'll tell you who won. Alright, so we can't close this out without Hunter and me also giving a tip. So, we'll let Hunter tell her first tip. What is it, Hunter? My tip is the baby brush hog. Like Hunter's go-to. That's Hunter's this confidence bait. That's all she flips usually. This is all I use most of the time. So, baby brush hog in watermelon violet and dip the tail. She dips the tails. And it always works. My tip is all about organization. So, the biggest constraint that we have fishing tournaments is time constraints. We have eight hours to go catch five fish. Sounds extremely easy. 
sitting on the couch. But when you're out there trying to do it, it is extremely difficult. My biggest thing, my biggest tip is going to be organized. And I'm going to show y'all. Here's one thing that people are, are overlooking, in my opinion, big time, is treble hooks and changing your crankbait hooks. This is how I store my, my hooks right here. It's a Gamakatsu G-Box. It's got little foam slits in it. That's how I store my treble hooks. I try to keep everything as organize as I possibly can so I can find everything as fast as possible on the water. I got these organized by size everything and the reason I show treble hooks is because people are overlooking changing treble hooks consistently. I always change hooks on every single crankbait before I fish a tournament and even during the tournament if a hook gets bent or dulled down during the tournament I'm changing hooks all the time during the actual event so change your treble hooks and then store all your baits and all your plastics as organized as you possibly can so you can find them fast on the water. You waste a little bit of time and you don't get frustrated slinging things over your head out of your compartments like I normally do, do anyway. when I'm not organized. I just be slinging stuff backwards. My coat hanger be dodging stuff. But I gotta find that one pack of the color that I need that's very in the bottom, way in the back, where Hunter put it last time she was fishing. So that's what I'm always looking for on the water. And Hunter, who won hold the on, giveaway? Hold on, hold on, I gotta show my Christmas gift. This is my Christmas present. And I'm gonna put something on the reel, like a, a like a purple dot or like a ribbon or something. So if y'all see this in Kyle's hand on a YouTube video, y'all have to let me know because he's not supposed to use it. Yeah, it's hunters. It's okay. all hunters. Ready for the rod giveaway? Yep, let's see. Yep. Okay, the rod giveaway winner is Hunter Hamilton. Congratulations, man. I uh, will uh, comment on here or message me on Instagram or Facebook and I will custom build you a point blank rod and we'll talk about it, try to set it up for how you, you want it. We're gonna make it just for you. So it's gonna be kind of to your, to your specifications, but I have built a lot of rods so I can kind of help, you know, tell you exactly what I think's the best, but we're gonna make it for you however you like it. So Hunter congratulations. Hamilton, congratulations. Congratulations, man, good job. Awesome tip, and good luck this next year. Hopefully you'll catch us some big ones on the brand new Point Blank and Fuji Rod. So that's it, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the tip video. Pretty good one. It's awesome. Glad everybody sent some stuff in. We got so many people to send stuff in, even ones we didn't use. So I really do appreciate it. If we didn't use yours, I apologize. We might have not saw it. We might have not caught it. Or it might have been a duplicate or anything like that. So don't take it personally. But we do appreciate y'all sending it in. Thank y'all for watching and being part of the channel. It's just a way for us to give back to the people who made a lot of things possible for us through the YouTube stuff. So, because it really does help a ton with sponsors and fishing and everything having the YouTube channel. And it's all because of y'all. So, we appreciate it. And we will see y'all in the next one. Gonna post a couple more videos before 2021. Mm -hmm. And that's it. See y'all guys. Appreciate it.